man, it's been like two years since I made a video about PC, water cooling, and when was the last time I made, yeah, modding videos, yeah, I haven't made those in a very long time. I do miss YouTube, to be honest, and this is why I want to make videos again. I want to start this channel again, but to be honest, um, I want to make it more of a diverse topic, not just about computers, but of course, more towards like the tech side of things. All right. So in, in today's topic, we are going to be talking about water cooling, the things you need to know before you even start to like go into this deep down rabbit hole, doing all these research and all that. So you just have to watch this video like very easily. Um, and I'll just summarize everything so that you don't have to do a lot of research. So I am going to give you, I think five things that you should need to know before you start researching and before i even start the video sorry guys i'm going to be actually changing the fans of this rig you'll see all the entire process of me changing this and see how much of a hassle that just changing fans can cause so yeah let's get on with it guys okay so point number one is that custom water cooling loops are not cheap now of course it depends on many people's uh, financial situations They're, you know I, I don't know how much you guys are making but uh in general i believe that it's not cheap and i'm going to quickly go over like how much uh all the things cost in this build so that you can have like kind of a, a rough idea how much it would cost to water cool your pc so to start off is that we're going to talk about the, the pump and the pump over there, uh, that's a DDC pump. And I believe that it costs around um, $100. Now, of course, there's two different types of um, pumps. There's the DDC pump and then there's the D5 pump. I believe the D5 pumps are a little bit more expensive because um, they're actually more quiet and I think they're longer lasting for some reason. But of course, there's a drawback that it's, it's a bigger pump not like this this one is like really really compact as you can see right there next is um the reservoir so the reservoir of course it comes in a variation um how big or how small that you want to get this reservoir costs around 75 us dollars um it's a uh, i think it's a 150 mil uh, reservoir which is um quite like a a nice size for this um, pc build cpu blocks costs around 100 dollars of course, it depends on the variation of the design as well. A simple one that has a acrylic on the top is probably the cheapest. But if you want to go like something different, like something like this uh, with a nice reflection on CPU block, um, it's a little bit more expensive. I believe this one is around $100. So I think you can get away with a cheaper one around $75 to $80. For the graphics card, some people like to maintain their graphics cards as is. So you don't water cool it. Or if you choose to water cool it, obviously you need to buy a graphics card or water block. And that costs around 100 to 150 US dollars as well, depending on the actual model of your graphics card. If it's the Founders Edition, it'll be cheaper. But then if it's like um, other brands like MSI, uh, Gigabyte and, and so forth, those are going to be more expensive because it requires more of a design on the block itself. Fittings. So, of course, uh, you will definitely know that I've used a lot of fittings. Now, fittings can cost up to approximately seven to ten US dollars. I know it's not that super expensive, but of course, if you multiply it by the number of um, ones that you're going to be using, say I have, um, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let's just say I'm using around fifteen in here. So fifteen times 10 is like around 150 US dollars, right? Now, of course, um, it's not just the fittings as well that I'm using. I'm also using um, rotators as well. So as you can see here, we're using a 90 degree rotator here. So this is not a fitting, this is a rotator, yeah? But this is the fitting, okay? So basically a 90 degree rotator is basically kind of um, uh, aligning the tube or aligning the water at a 90 degree or maybe even 45 degree as well. So 45 degree rotators. So these rotators are a little bit more expensive. The 90 degree would cost around 17 US dollars. And again, depends on how many rotators you're using in this build. So as you can see here, I've used um, quite a lot um, for my convenience. As you can see here, there's two here. That's 245. So obviously 245 becomes a 90. 
but I didn't use the 90 because um, there's not enough space, right? So it's kind of have to curve downwards a bit. It will have enough space to come here. There's two 90 degrees here. And of course, there's a lot here actually. There's a lot going on here. This is 45, 45, 45, and 45 right here. So of course, the more rotators you have, the more it costs. Let's just say I am having 15 rotators as well. So 15 rotators multiplied by, let's say, 17 US dollars each, that would probably cost around 250 something. Then we have two radiators over here, 360 and another 360 up there. And of course, like radiators come in um, a variety of sizes. Of course, the smaller, the cheaper and um, the bigger and the thicker might be more expensive as well. This one costs um, 90 to $100 each. And so obviously if you have two, then double the price of that. So overall, all the custom water cooling gear cost cha-ching right there. And uh, if you think that it's not super expensive for your bank, then keep watching this video. The next thing I want to point out is a lot of planning. So of course, uh, there's nothing that is out of the box. You know, if you buy this set, you can just put it in your rig. Before you even buy anything, I highly suggest you to find out what limitations does your computer case has. Does it have like a uh, space for a pump res combo? Does it have a space for a radiator? Is it even designed for water cooling? I mean, of course, any, any case can be designed for water cooling, but you might need to have some hacks. But in order to save money, you need to do a lot of planning. What I highly suggest is you buy the big stuff first. So you buy the radiator, you buy the fans, you buy the reservoir, you buy the pump. Make sure all that fits first. And then, you know, you get that all in place and then you just study how and what fittings and rotators you need in order to complete the loop. You might just want to buy like a few uh, fittings, uh, rotators first, maybe one or two, uh, and then you can just give it a go, try um, thread it in first and see if it fits and then see how many more. Don't buy like all at once and then think that it's going to work. So another thing that I would like to mention is uh, kind of like a hidden cost to custom water cool your PC. Of course, this is more for a, a hardline tubing. Hardline tubing, you can expect to bend some tubes, that's for sure. So you need a heat gun. That's, uh, that's the thing that you would need. You need a silicone uh, for it to stay in shape. Obviously, you can't bend the, the tubes without a silicone inside it. Tube cutters as well. Tube cutters um, uh, may cost like a few few dollars. I mean, it's, it's not super expensive. And a chamfer as well. We have to make the, the corners of the, the end of the tubes like nice and smooth so that it doesn't cut like any of the O-rings as well. Other things that might be useful, but it's optional are like those uh, assisted bending tools for, for bending your tubes as well. Um, they're quite useful because um, if you're not really good at bending it, uh, you can actually use one of those really cool assisted 90 degree bend or 45 degree bend. You might have to buy a little bit more tubes because if you're first time doing this water cooling build and uh, you're trying to bend some tubes, I will 100% I guarantee you, you might mess up on the first few rounds. I think what you have to do is you kind of have to sacrifice one tube and then kind of practice how you would like to bend it. It takes some practice um, to bend like exactly where you want to bend it. And of course, um, it takes kind of some practice as well, cutting the end of the tube so that the exact length that you wanted will match with the, the length between a fitting to another fitting. Maintenance is another thing that I would like to mention. So of course, this depends on like what components you're using in your PC or like what types of liquid you're using in the, in the loop. So to start off, um, the first one is if you know that you're going to be upgrading your CPU in the near future, or if you know you're going to be upgrading your GPU in the near future, for example, you, you bought an i5 and then in the next two, three months, you're going to buy an i7 there's got to be a lot of um, uh, maintenance compared to an air cooling system. This is because obviously you have to drain out the water or the liquid out from the system and then you have to take all the fittings and tubes apart in order to access the CPU and replace the CPU. So there's quite a lot of work just to change a CPU. Also for the graphics card, we have to drain the liquid first in order to access and get it out. 
And another thing is you might have to buy another water block as well because if the new graphics card is not compatible with the existing water block, there's a lot more cost to that as well, right? And another thing that uh, I've mentioned just a bit earlier is the liquid, the types of liquid you're using. Now, personally, I like using distilled water. To be honest, I'm not really a big fan of um, colored coolants, dyes and pastels and things like that. The reason is because they do require maintenance sooner than just distilled water. I'm not saying you shouldn't go with colored liquid coolants. I personally think they look awesome, like totally cool. I've seen so many rigs that are like colored coolants and they're like perfectly matched in the build. But I think that you should do some research before you buy any liquid coolants. Um, maybe do some research on YouTube channels, maybe Reddits or maybe other like community pages and web boards and things like that. See, see others feedback of like a specific type of coolant that you're interested in. And if you're confident with that, totally go for it. So I'm gonna end the video right here because I think the video is getting a bit long as I was looking through the video editing parts. Um, I'm gonna split the video into two. So the next video will be uh, me changing out the fans and um, stay tuned for that. And uh, if you guys uh, have any other suggestions for like water cooling or starting to water cool for like beginners, or maybe if you advance in water cooling already and just watching this video for the giggles and you might wanna add something. So let us know down in the comments below. Other than that, um, stay tuned for the next video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.